Okay, so my name is Tom Samstag, aka Technical Tom, and I'm here to talk to you about HTTPS. Um, little tribute to the uh, H or the SSL Observatory. I'm taking a little less broad view, but trying to focus in a little bit better. It doesn't look like it's working. I got it. Um, quick intro about me. I'm a security engineer at Security Innovation. We're looking for talented people in Seattle and Boston. And I'm also a member of the NEG9 CTF team. If you're interested in either of those things, come see me afterwards. We're both looking for good people. Um, so this all started when I installed yet another Firefox add-on to try to get more of my traffic over a secure channel. And I was disappointed at how many of the websites I visit are still not accessible over HTTPS. So I decided I'd take a little better look at it. So the plan was scan the top sites and then try to classify them. Um, I figure I can kind of classify sites and how, how secure they are. Class A are the best of the best, the ones that you can only browse via HTTPS. Can't see them insecure at all. Class B are the ones that they support both. You know, you can, you can view it insecure, you can view it secure, but it's really up to the user to choose. It's acceptable. It's not ideal. And then class C are the ones that have no HTTPS support. Whether it be bad certs, expired certs, self-signed certs, no server running at all. These are the ones that you just can't view secure. And naive me, I thought pretty much every site I, I scanned would fit into these three. Uh, then I found out there's really a fourth class, uh, class WTF, that's just really screwed up server configurations. Uh, sites where the secure site uh, redirect to an insecure site and the insecure site direct to a secure site. Uh, sites that just are, ha serve two different pages on secure and insecure. Just screwed up sites. So my process, visit the site in insecure and secure manners. Also scan the site with scripts to gauge how well their HTTPS configuration is. Uh, crunch a bunch of numbers, make some pretty graphs, show it to you here. So before I go into the numbers, I think it's important to, to go over some of the sources of bias or error in, in the process, and there's definitely some of them. Um, so reasons my, my results could be a little bit too optimistic, like they show the, the world better than it is. Um, Secure landing pages, uh, a lot of, uh, some sites, when you go to the, the, the main page by typing in just the domain, they end, end up on a secure login page. Those ones will show up better than, than they should be if, they, if every other page is insecure. And of course, I could have bugs in my scripts. Um, reasons why my, the results could be too pessimistic, uh, so browsers do a lot of tricks to, to try to get you to a secure site if that's what you ask for. Um, incomplete certificate chains, browsers figure that out. They cache intermediate certs. Um, they often, they, uh, browsers also fall back to dub, dub, dub dom subdomains. So if you type in whatever.com and it doesn't return a valid page, a lot of browsers will try dub, dub, dub dot whatever dot com. My scripts don't do that. I'm looking at it as if, if your domain doesn't work, it's already screwed up. Um, I'm also only did a scan one time. If I happen to catch a site at downtime, so be it. Um, I also found out relatively late in the process that sites that have multiple IP addresses for a DNS lookup, some of my scripts weren't handling it correctly. It's a bug I need to f fix before uh, really crunching the numbers further. And of course, my scripts could have bugs in them. So the rough outline of the results are unfortunately what you would expect being, being a cynical security person. Um, I scanned the top 15,000 sites by Alexa numbers. And by and large, the biggest bulk of them are class C, the ones that don't support SSL at all. Um, a nice little chunk, little over 5% are in that class B that the user can choose. 
and then there's that little tiny sliver, 131 sites of 15,000 that actually forced you to use HTTPS. I wish I could say these results were surprising, but they're about what I expected. Um, going into a little bit why sites are in class C, uh, no, these numbers don't add up because a lot of sites fail in multiple ways. Um, about 72% of sites that are in class C, uh, if you try to download it, it just fails. And if you ignore all cert errors, it just fails. That could be uh, HTTP errors, could be server not, not uh, responding. Uh, and then smaller chunks, averaging around 10 to 20% for bad certs, expired certs, uh, untrusted certs, whether it be self-signed or uh, and not in the Mozilla cert store. Uh, so then I went a little bit further and looked at the minimum and maximum protocols uh, that are supported. So in the SSL handshake, the server reports what protocols it, it supports. And these ones had a few surprises. Um, so on the left there, the graph is showing that most servers say that they, re that they support at minimum SSL v3, which is probably what you would expect. You would hope that more of those have now been migrating to TLS v1, but, and then on the right, you see the maximum version. And uh, so the, the really interesting parts are the, the ones where, say, minimum TLS version 1.2. Uh, that's probably a server misconfiguration. And then the, the large number, I mean, it's only 86, but it's a significant chunk that support at most SSL v3. And this is 2012. We should be beyond SSL v3. Um, so then we get to have a little bit more fun. Because um, now we get, we're starting to look at some of the specific errors. Um, seven, trusted and valid, meaning Mozilla trusts it and it's within its time. Uh, these certs except null ciphers, which basically mean no encryption at all. And a couple of those names might sound familiar. Uh, the font's a little screwed up, but uh, Citrix, Walmart.com, and how many of you use Mint.com to, to track all of your financial data? They support null ciphers. Uh, 26 trusted and valid uh, except anonymous cipher suites, which mean that there's no authentication or in the SSL handshake, including DinDNS and Gravatar. How many websites do you visit have Gravatars embedded in them? And it's cut off a little bit at the bottom. 442 trusted and valid support ex export ciphers, which means they, they have weak enough encryption that our government says anybody in the world can have it back in whatever year that was. And I can't see my examples, but... Uh, yeah, you'll, you can check out the slides later. They're just as, as entertaining. So HSTS, if you're not aware, is a relatively new standard. If you support HTTPS on your website, you should definitely rule out HSTS. It's a way of saying, you want SSL, trust me. For the next however long you specify, any browser that, that has this data cached will not try to go to the insecure site. It will always try the secure site. This is an awesome standard that, that definitely gets you a huge advantage in security. And unfortunately, only 12 of the top 15,000 sites that I've scanned actually use HSTS, including PayPal.com, which is actually one of the biggest proponents and pushers of this standard through the, through, uh, to completion. Uh, Gandhi, a registrar, and LastPass.com. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that I can put up a fourth of the, the the domains in the, in the example list, but all class A and class Bs should support this because it turns a class B site into a class A site. Okay, so this one is my favorite. You type in HTTPS into your browser and you end up on an HTTPS site, so you're safe, right? Citibank.com, you type in HTTPS Citibank.com, it redirects you to an insecure site which d d redirects you to a secure site. If someone's man in the middle of you, they get the insecure 
transfer, and you're owned. <laughs> Citibank.com does this, along with, uh, I think it's cut off, I think it was 30 sites that I scanned. Citibank's just the, the most fun to pick, pick on. A um, couple other surprises. I was actually pleasantly surprised that I saw no valid and trusted certs that actually use MD5 in the signing. Uh, if you weren't following it, it was busted years ago with some of the weaknesses in MD5. The, the, the browser community and the standards community made a big push to eliminate all of these certs. And luckily, it, it looks like it worked, at least for my sample size. Um, there's a, a decent chunk that use SHA-1, and there's actually a few that I saw that actually use SHA-256 in their signing. 10% um, of the certs that I found were actually EV certs. You know, that's a data point. I don't really care. EV certs don't really mean much to most of us. Uh, they just turn the, the address bar a different color. And uh, it's cut off again, but the two uh, latest expiring trusted and valid certs expire in February 2020. And the surprising thing about this is they are both large hosting companies. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I found out that one of them is actually my hosting company too. Um, so those are the numbers that I got so far. Uh, I'm looking to put some of the data in a, in a better format. Uh, Dan was talking about all the crazy tools that he has and the databases he's pushing into. I have a bunch of text files in grep. Um, but some of the resources, if you want to look at this stuff yourself, the best one that I can recommend is SSLIs. It's a tool out of, uh, out of uh, ISEC partners. It replaces, in my opinion, completely deprecates SSL scan and SSL tool or whatever to, to scan for valid cipher suites. It's Python. It's extendable. It's awesome. I'm going to be pushing more patches to them. Check it out. and. Also, if you do anything with looking at HTTPS, you should know the Qualys uh, HTTP, or their SSL labs. You give it a URL, it gives you a score based on their criteria on how good it is. A um, couple more resources. Uh, this all started with Firefox add-on, so everybody should be using HTTPS everywhere. Uses a, a, a predefined uh, list of URLs that it mangles in to make sure that you always go to HTTPS. And the one that started it all is HTTPS Finder, or started this presentation for me, which just tries to go to HTTPS and see if it works. And if so, it redirects you there. Um, and that's all I got. So once again, my name is Tom Samstag, aka Technical Tom. Um, Technical Tom on, on Twitter. And you can reach me at those email addresses. And these slides will be going up on both my personal website and my uh, employer's site at Security Innovation. And if you have any questions, you can find me afterwards. Thank you.